Oh, we got a little bit of snow, eh? Sorry. So you guys think I sound like anyways, right? Anyways, I figure this is probably a, as good a time as any to talk about the four-wheel drive system on these forerunners. And more specifically, the one trick that you can do, super easy, to keep your four-wheel drive working on these. Because, despite what some delusional people think, even though it's a Toyota 4Runner, they still have their handful of uh, common failures on them. Yeah, it's more reliable than pretty much any vehicle out there, but it doesn't mean things don't have some problems here and there. And one of those problems is the actuator on your four-wheel drive. So, these forerunners. Do I smell coolant? No! God, please, no! 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 I have to take a look at that, I guess. Can't really see, but the four wheel drive is controlled electronically on these, unlike some vehicles that have a, a big old lever. We've got an electronic switch. So that's what cycles your four-wheel drive from, uh, in this case, all-wheel drive to four-low. And there's an actuator in the transfer case. And basically, if you don't use your four-wheel drive often, there's a pretty good chance that that's going to seize up. And you'll have trouble engaging your four-wheel drive, uh, or it might just not engage at all. Now, if you get to that point and you want to fix it, <laughs> well, you're going to be basically rebuilding that transfer case because the actuator is inside and you got to pull it apart to get at it. So that's not going to be cheap. Now, there's a really simple way to keep any problems from happening with your four-wheel drive engagement. And those of you that have been forerunner owners for a while, you're already familiar with this. So thanks for watching. Feel free to check out and I'll catch you on the next one. If you aren't aware of this, it is literally as simple as use it or lose it. And uh, I think this kind of got started on the T4R forums where everybody started talking about it and uh, it just comes down to once a month you got to cycle this. Cycle through, in this case it's a V8 4Runner so all it has is all-wheel drive which is 4 high and then 4 low. If you have a V6 4Runner you can have 2-wheel drive, 4 high and 4 low. So basically once a month cycle through all those options and keep everything freed up and then it's never gonna stop working for you. It's basically that easy. Now one thing I like to do is whenever I do my monthly use it or lose it ritual is I'll cycle the center diff lock as well. Which by the way, center diff lock, we're gonna talk about that in a second. But and then I also I'll give the, the parking brake a, a press as well. Just because I don't know if it's that important, but those things aren't things that I personally use that often. And I want to keep everything functional and freed up because, I mean, even a parking brake, if those cables seize up or whatever, then uh, the one time that you do go to use it, if you're loading a car onto a trailer or something like that, boom, you got problems. So it's so easy to just use this stuff once in a while and then you never have a failure. I'm not saying you have to go and rock crawl on the Rubicon trail or anything with four-wheel drive. I'm, all you got to do is just cycle it. Use it once a month, in and out, you'll never have a problem. So while we're here talking about four-wheel drive anyways, then let's talk about how to actually use the four-wheel drive in these forerunners. And I'm talking about this center diff lock button. And I think Toyota confused a lot of people by calling it that. At least here in North America, we call it a transfer case. I don't know what this center diff lock garbage is all about. Maybe it's a thing in Asia or European markets, but... But here in North America, we call that a transfer case. And the differentials, we consider those on the axles. You got a front diff and a rear diff. And I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, I, I had to turn the, the locking rear diff on on my 4Runner. Wait a minute. You don't have one, man. Center diff lock is your transfer case. So pushing this button, what that's going to do is, in the case of this V8 4Runner, we have full-time all-wheel drive, so you, you start it up, you put it in drive, you got full-time all-wheel drive even on a hot summer day. And what that's going to do is transfer power to whichever wheel it believes has traction at the time. Now, by hitting the center diff lock button, you're switching it to more of a traditional 4 high. And what that's going to do is lock the transfer case to, I, I'm pretty sure it's 50-50 front and rear. And 
That does another very important thing in the case of these forerunners. Why am I out of focus here? What's going on? There we go. Another thing it does by pushing that button is it turns off all the electronic nannies. So we've got like traction control, stability control, and when you're just driving in regular all-wheel drive mode on these things, I know it's just a matter of personal opinion, but I absolutely hate it. it it's The system is very... I don't know how to explain it, but it thinks it knows what you need, and it does the, the total opposite. I hate it. It, I would rather be in control myself. And so as soon as you hit this button right here, then that turns those things off. And now you've got 50-50 front and rear with no electronics kicking in. Basically, the computer is going to do whatever it thinks it has to to try and keep you from flying off into the cabbage. But the problem is the computer's an idiot, and it doesn't always do the right thing. So what it'll do is it'll flick the ABS on different wheels, trying to get it to bite in and give you traction, which is annoying. And everybody that actually drives in winter conditions knows that the worst thing you can do when you're sliding is slam on the brakes. And another big thing that it does that drives me nuts is it cuts power in a huge way. If it notices that your tires are slipping, this thing will just absolutely fall on its face. And you've got traffic flying up behind you, everybody's honking their horns, you've got it right to the mat, and people are screaming, babies are crying, holy crap. So if you're driving in slippery conditions, I would recommend hitting that center diff lock button to turn all that stupid electronics off, because then at least you're in control. But remember guys, your 4th gen 4Runner does not have locking diffs. No 4th gen 4Runners were sold with a locking rear diff like the Tacoma and the FJ Cruiser. Actually, I take that back. There was one, I believe it was the 2009 Trail Edition. I think that came with a locking rear diff, but those trucks are unicorns. You're probably not going to find one. Other than that, you don't have a diff lock. You've got a transfer case that you can function, but your every 4th gen 4Runner has open front and rear axles. So don't think that you can get yourself into a hairy situation and say, oh, don't worry, I saw this on the internet once. I just got to lock the rear diff and it'll climb right out. Well, you're going to have some problems, bud. Now, as for when to use the four low function, so when you want to use this, this what this is going to do is change the gearing, okay? So uh, if you find that you're on a steep incline and you let your foot off the brake, and the truck just doesn't move forward at all, it just sits there stalled. If you were to shift this into four low, think of it like using the really low gears on a bicycle, and it's not changing the power or how anything works, but it's dropping the gearing down. And so that means that the engine works way less hard to actually spin the tires, it's much more effortless. Just like when you're climbing a hill on your bicycle, you go to a lower gear because you got girly little legs that you didn't do your leg presses at the gym or your squats like you're supposed to. So you got to use those low gears to climb up stuff. That's what four low is for, guys. And you can actually notice a difference if you're on an incline and you're in regular four high or all-wheel drive and your truck isn't moving forward. If you drop it to four low, chances are when you let off the brakes, it's going to crawl right up because it's got that low gearing now. All right. Now, as for how to actually shift into and out of these things, I'll show you how you can do that too. This is now we're getting to the stuff of the the new Forerunner owners that haven't read their manual and would rather watch a video. Uh, for four low, you have to be in neutral. So, well, I'm in park right now, but we're gonna put it in neutral, and then foot on the brake, obviously, go like that. And you can usually even hear a clunk as it goes into four low. That's okay. That's just I mean we don't have synchros and stuff like a transmission has. The, the gears are gonna clunk a little bit. And you can see. Right in the dash there, your four low light is on. Now you know what you got there. And again, in neutral, shift back out of it. There we go, we're out. And take a look guys, that's 217,000 kilometers. So I don't know what that is in miles, probably over 120,000 miles. And you can see my four wheel drive engages and disengages effortlessly, no problem. So all you gotta do is use it guys. Now as for the, the center diff lock here, uh, I believe you can, there's a certain speed that you can go up to and still engage that. I always just do it the same as the four low, but I think that's actually incorrect. I think you can do it while you're driving around, just reach down and hit it. It's kind of in a crappy position. You, like when you're driving, at least if you're taller like me, you can't really see those buttons down there. You end up turning your uh, electronic stuff on instead of your diff lock. But 
So you can do that if you're driving at slow speeds, lock it up. If you're having trouble, if it's uh, acting stupid with all the electronics, or you're having trouble finding traction. Uh, one thing though, I wouldn't recommend driving around on dry roads with that engaged, just because your, your four-wheel drive system is gonna be binding up. Your wheels need to be able to turn independently from each other uh, when you're on dry ground. Uh, if you're on slippery ground, like you can see in, in the snow here, then they can bind up all they want because there's actually give for the tires on the ground. They're not stuck. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. This doesn't make any sense. Maybe that made sense. I don't know. Read the manual. But basically, this one, you hit the button, and you can see now you got the logo for the center diff lock engaged, and you also see VSC off. And that's the stability control. That's the stuff that I hate. Why aren't you focusing? camera's got ADHD or something boys but you can see now you got those lights on that's uh I like to call that party mode that means that you've got full control of the vehicle now and uh but again don't drive around like that on dry ground to me it's just it's not a good idea don't do it now all of these things whether it's the four low or the center diff lock when they engage you'll see that the lights come on on the dash you'll know they're engaged now if they're not engaging then those lights are going to be flashing and that tells you that, that it didn't go as planned and you didn't get what you wanted and that's not the end of the world sometimes it'll do that if you're on kind of uneven ground or uh, sometimes you just have to it's as simple as you just got to roll the vehicle forward like a foot and it just you got to try it again and uh, usually that'll be whatever it takes anytime that i've had trouble getting into either of these four-wheel drive modes it, it's just a matter of pulling up a little bit and they'll all engage then if you've tried everything and you've tried uh, shifting it in and out, you've tried a neutral, you've tried moving forward a bit, you've got yourself on level ground and it still isn't engaging, I'm sorry to say I think you might have a problem. But uh, hopefully that's not the case for you. All right, let me give you a little demonstration of... Whoop, whoop. Let me give you a little demonstration of how each of these things work. So first we're going to do the difference between 4 high and 4 low. So I'm kind of on some kind of rough snowy parking lot action here. So let's see if I shift it into drive and let off the brake, am I gonna pull forward? Nope, my foot is completely off the brake and I am in drive. Now, let's try, pop it into neutral. Let's go with four low. We've got it engaged, back into drive. And now let's see if we move forward. Look at that. It's just crawling forward. Like the little old forerunner that could. So that gives you an idea of how four low works. Obviously you don't do that at high speeds. That's just for crawling and everything. Okay, next up, this is regular four high mode. And you're gonna see how the stuff turns on in the dash. As soon as I give it any kind of gas and the wheels start to slip, it's gonna fall right on its face. That was a bad example. It's uh, not really falling on its face the way I was hoping it would. Let's engage the center diff lock, switch to party mode. Okay, that was a failed test. It's, uh, I guess it's just not slippery enough in this snow. Oh well. Anyways, that's all I got for you. Uh, and I gotta give a special shout out to those of you that are watching these videos all the way to the end. Uh, and especially those of you that are hitting all those stupid little buttons on the bottom that all the annoying YouTubers are always begging you to press. That's what's gonna help this channel to continue to grow. And the more I see it grow, the more I wanna make these videos. So. Uh, thank you to all of you guys that are supporting the channel so far. You guys are awesome. Don't forget, cycle your four-wheel drive once a month. Use it or lose it. Uh, get out there. Enjoy your truck. Get it into party mode. Get it sideways. Do your freaking donuts. I'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Wanna spend it all on you, baby? My room is a cheese pot. Call me Mr. Flister. Call me Mr. Call me Call me Mr.